Fellow auto detailers, welcome to the show that features interviews with today's most successful auto detailers. This is the Auto Detailing Podcast. Here's your host, Jimbo Balaam. Hey, what's up, everyone, and welcome to this episode of the Auto Detailing Podcast. This is episode 428, and uh, br- brought back on my friend Joe Connolly and, uh, from Pennsylvania, who just... Uh, so I, I don't know. I don't know what it is about you, Joe, but I love the emails and the ideas that you have and create. And I feel like we just have a good vibe when you come on. So I really, really appreciate it. And uh, today we're talking about 10 ways that you can really tell that you're either not going to land the client or you don't want the client. So we're talking about when someone calls in and I feel like this is, you know, there are 10 things. There's probably a million things to be honest, but really these 10 things are gleaned from experience only. Uh, you can't really teach these things in a class. I mean, you can, you can try, and we're obviously going to try in this podcast format, but uh, these are, there's a lot of laughing that goes on because it's straight experience that has dictated this list of 10 things. So I hope if you're a newbie detailer that you can glean insight from these and kind of take some notes or jot them down and make sure when it starts to happen to you that you know how to handle them or you know where the conversation is going, uh, or and if you're a seasoned, seasoned vet, you can uh, sit back and laugh with us, and I'm sure you'll be able to, uh, it, we could all sit around and tell stories, horror stories probably, about uh, conversations that started out like the 10 things that we talk about in this episode. So I really hope you guys enjoy this one. Thanks again to Joe for coming out, or coming out. We actually did this virtually, uh, uh, <laughs> coming on and uh, sharing his experience too and kind of leading this podcast. So hope you guys enjoy this one. And this one is brought to you by housecallpro.com. If you go to housecallpro.com slash ADP, it stands for Auto Detailing Podcast, uh, you are going to get a free demo uh, and a discount on your monthly service for uh, a customer CRM or customer relationship management software that makes it very, very good. That way, when you attract the right customer and get the right customer, you can keep hold on to that customer for a long time to come. So without further ado, here we go. My podcast with Joe Conley. All right, there we go. Do you want to play your sound effects now or should I do my intro? No, why don't you intro it? I'll, I'll right. just work them in. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome. <laughs> they heard that too because that was part of the recording. Welcome to this episode of the Auto Detailing Podcast. I have one of my favorite guests. That's Joe Connolly. And he's one of my favorites because he always emails me with a bunch of ideas and he's a great guest to have. And I feel like, Joe, you're, you're very... Uh, underrated the knowledge that you offer and the the gems that you've uh given away freely on this podcast have been many and we still have so much to learn from you so i appreciate you coming back on and spending your time thank you for the kind words there jb i think a good clickbait title for this one would be how to know the initial phone call is going to fail (laughs) say it one more time how to know the initial phone call is going to fail do tell. Let's hear it. So, uh, you know how you can usually tell by what the customer says in the first minute of a phone call as to whether or not you're going to close or it's going to be a dumpster fire? Yes. So beyond that, I have a quick question for you. Can you tell bef- just by the tone of their voice? Or, no, and I, I recall not the you tone, saying but, that. Okay. I'm, I'm not that good yet, pal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not always right. But sometimes it's like, oh, boy, this is going to be not good. Maybe we should call you like the customer whisperer or something. I don't know. <laughs> it happens to, It happens in, I don't know, I just have a weird thing with people's voices, but not yours. So keep going. <laughs> good to know. Wait, would you tell me if you did? Uh, you just wouldn't come back on the podcast. <laughs> 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 That's not to say, that is not to say if you're listening and you've been a past guest, the reason that you're not on the show again. <laughs> Actually, I don't think I've ever had, to be honest, I don't think I've ever had someone on the show where like their voice really, really bothered me because I just wouldn't have done it, you know, in the first place. Yep. So I'm digging myself in a hole. So keep going. <laughs> so uh, here in Pennsylvania, the weather's gotten nice and, and the phone's ringing a lot more often. So I've tried to make some notes as to what patterns I've seen, you know, pattern recognition kind of thing. And Mm -hmm. keep in mind, I've I've carefully worked on my SEO over the past five years to refine my Google ad 
keywords to cut out as many BS phone calls as possible. Um, plus, the language on my website also tends to be kind of a pre-qualifier, but this doesn't keep all the time wasters from calling, especially those who just talk to Siri or say, okay, Google, detailer near me, and that's, you know, the most they're interacting. Uh, but that aside, you know, here are my top 10 phrases that usually indicate to me that I'm not going to close this potential customer and talking to them for any length of time past what is socially appropriate will only prove to be a frustrating experience. And by the way, content warning, I'm probably going to come across as judgmental uh, or arrogant and sarcastic, uh, but it's also going to be the truth. They should so, be used to that by now with my brashness, hopefully. <laughs> Okay, that was a failed attempt at a drum roll. <laughs> I was going to say your DMX, <laughs> your DMX uh, up in here worked a little bit better earlier, but they didn't get the pleasure of hearing that. <laughs> so uh, number one would be how much. Um, it's Those two words are usually followed by for a detail. So you know, ring, ring, I answer it. They say how much for a detail or how much fill in the blank. Uh, and then the customer just stops, You know, almost as if they think there's one price with no consideration for the size of the vehicle, the age of the vehicle, the condition of the vehicle. Uh, these customers I've found are usually only focused on price. And on the off chance that I do end up closing them, uh, I usually regret it once I arrive at their location and I see the condition of the vehicle. And I usually almost always regret it when I finish making their janky ass car look as nice as possible and working twice as hard than during a normal detail. And then they come out to inspect it and they'll focus on some dent or a cigarette burn that I cannot clean away because it's damaged. So. Nailed it right off. Yes, nailed it. And that's so important. So, it's it's attracting the – sorry to cut you off, but I'm probably going to cut you off through each one of these. But um, it's so important that it, we focus on customers that aren't only worried about price. When price – I don't want a customer that the price is the only concern usually turns into a customer that doesn't return, you know, obviously most people it's part of the consideration process, but I don't want it. Number one. I agree a hundred percent. And you can cut me off all you want. This is your podcast, not mine. I know, but I, I feel like you do such a better job. So I'm going to try to let you go. Nailed it on that one. Number two. <laughs> Is this the car wash? So, you know, ring, ring, I answer it, and they say, is this the car wash? Uh, and I say that because there's a family of dealerships in my city that have a few branded drive through car washes, and everyone in my city knows that. They do a great job, knows them because they do a great job advertising their brand, right? So, you know, even though I've specifically turned off any keyword that will hit on my Google ad for the words car wash, I still get calls from customers of that car wash, and sometimes it's complaint calls after that car wash jacks up a vehicle. So I usually cut them off by saying, you've called me, I'm a mobile detailer, the car wash is one of my competitors, and then usually it's crickets. Uh, they usually hang up right away or they'll say sorry and get off the call as quickly as they can, which frankly is fine by me. Big distinction, you're not a car wash, you're a detail, detailer, detail shop, detail center. Yep. All right, number three, interior only. So this is usually a call because someone vomited or defecated or urinated in a vehicle with cloth seats, or it's a vehicle that is full of pet hair or sand from a beach trip or a minivan that hasn't been vacuumed since George Bush was in office. And a variation <laughs> of this call is, I thought you'd like that one. A variation <laughs> of this call is when they act surprised that as a detailer, I detail both the inside and the outside of the vehicle and they'll, they'll ask me if my price, quote, includes the outside, which brings up a whole nother ball of wax because, you know, what counts as the outside? Do, do the door jams count as the outside? Or be, once I open the doors, is that inside? If I'm washing the outside and they open it up and the door jams are dirty? Or, for instance, I explain to them, I can do the outside only or I can do the inside only. But even if I clean the windows, they're still going to look dirty because the other side of the glass is dirty. So no matter what, right. you're going to be disappointed. I usually put it back on them and say, you know, I'll, I'll do what you're asking me to do, but I'm just telling you ahead of time, it's going to look better if, um, 
you know, I do the whole thing. And, and if it's somebody who, let's say at the end of the day and they're, they're real nice and I can tell that it's kind of a stretch for them to pay for just an interior only, you know, I think you said this plenty of times, if you can hustle and, and do something extra like a wash and a, a spray wax and really knock their socks off, that might be the reason why they leave a review for you, which is going to be further business in the future. So it makes sense. Plus, you know, over totally we lost you a little bit looks like maybe a headphone fell out but totally and that, that's it you nailed it that's exactly what i was going to say sometimes to mitigate that you could say you know hey look i don't do uh interiors only or to, as a way to justify your price for an interior detail you say well hey look i for an interior detail because like you said even if i do the windows on the inside the windows on the outside are going to look good and it might you know cause issues I do a free car wash, you know, with every, with every interior detail. And what I do, if you're using DI water, um, since it's a free service, you don't have to go crazy with it, but you can wash the outside and kind of let it air dry if you're using deionized water while you start working on the inside, you know? So it's really not that much extra work, um, to do it. hundred percent. So number four, quote, not that bad, end quote. And I think you were actually the first <laughs> detailer who put me onto this false statement. And I'm going to say this in all caps if I can without screaming it and coming across as some weirdo. It's a scam. Quote, <laughs> not that bad, end quote, is code speak for uh, it's a dumpster fire that <laughs> yes. we put out using maple syrup. <laughs> yes, that 100%. It's Yes. If they say it's not that bad, <laughs> quote it high and get pictures. <laughs> yep. I don't think I've ever done a card that the person said, it's not that bad, and it really wasn't that bad. It's always when they call and say, it's a mess, it's horrible, I haven't had it detailed in a while, blah, 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 and you get there and it looks like they just got home from the car wash or from the detail. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yep. Yeah, I hear you. <laughs> Number five, quote, it costs how much, end quote. So <laughs> my prices are clearly marked on my website, right? And if I get this response, not only have they telegraphed to me that they didn't visit my website, but they're also usually surprised by how much detailing costs and thus have no clue what goes into a proper detail. So watch out for it costs how much. It's also not an experienced person who's gotten a detail before, right? Yeah. Because they would know how much right. it costs. <laughs> <laughs> like that one. All right. We're coming up on halftime. Lightning round. I'm going to hit you with four questions. This. You ready for this? I'm ready. Question one. What TV show did you binge on during COVID? Oh, I'm starting to go through the last dance, the Michael Jordan doc on, I don't know if it was on ESPN or where, but yep, that one. That's a good one. Early Question COVID, two. I got sucked into the news too much, had to take a break from all TV, then went to the last dance. Good. I'm glad you came around. <laughs> Question <laughs> two, what goal are you killing in 2020? Uh, income goals. Not to sound like nice. a jerk, but income goals for sure. And Yeah. And it's, feels yeah. Yep. Flip side of that, what goal are you falling short on in 2020? As none of my business, you could just say pass. No, totally. So as I've been kind of sneaking out a little bit, you know, we moved and I've kind of had this uh, project going on at my house and blah, blah, blah. That sucked up a little bit of my time. And I feel like during that time, the past month and a half or so, my business is kind of, my business hasn't sagged. It's continued to grow, but my, like, I haven't been nailing the podcast at all. You know, I took like a month off the podcast and there's just some things that I really enjoy doing that I didn't allocate time for during the past month or two. And I really need to get back on track with that. Cool. Last question. What podcast or audio book are you listening to right now? Okay. So the, I, there's two really good podcasts that I really like. One is the Wolf's Den with Jordan Belfort. He is the real Wolf of Wall Street. 
So he has a podcast. I will say his voice is a little annoying. <laughs> but that one, and then uh, he could be a little brash, and if you saw that movie, you could see he's a little bit hardcore. So if you like something <laughs> like that, but a little bit more on the like PG-13 side of things, uh, there's a phenomenal podcast by Ed Milet, uh just called The Ed Milet Show. It's His last name is spelled M-Y-L-E-T-T. Uh, and both are kind of business podcast, I guess. Uh, but they have really, really good guests and stories and stuff. So those are my two right now. Nice. I've never heard of Ed Milet. I'll look that one up. And he, if you follow him on Instagram, he, he lives in Orange County and has a phenomenal, uh, insane house on the beach in uh, South Orange County that he showed. He's not a, what I like about him is he's not like over the top braggadocious, but you could tell he has, he's worked very hard and has a lot of really amazing things in his life. Um, and he shows them, you know, and it's cool, but not in like a MTV Cribs way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're dating yourself with that reference. I'm getting old, man. <laughs> All right, number six, quote, I will call back, end quote, or another variation, <laughs> quote, I will talk with my husband or boyfriend or fill in the blank and call back, end quote. For me, both are an indication that they're not straightforward enough just to verbalize their objection. You know, maybe that objection is price or maybe it's something else. I don't give a rip. I just, you know, if they, have, if they voice it, maybe I have a chance to address it or maybe I'm not the right fit for them. And it's, uh, it's nice having enough in the funnel to be able to turn down business mm -hmm. because if I'm not the right fit, I want to tell them up front. So I'm not disappointing them and getting some uh, bad rating, but you know, I suspect it's usually price related and I just want to save face, but I am shocked when the three or so percent, of those who say that uh, they'll call back actually do so uh, usually because I suspect they shopped around and realized that I'm priced. Okay. Comparison in comparison to those in my city. Yep. Especially if you factor everything else in, maybe you were the only one that answered the call or called back. Maybe you were the only one with availability. Uh, you know, a lot of things can happen. I think one of my favorite things to do is actually ha like hire other services that I need you know, or go somewhere, uh, target or a restaurant or whatever, and kind of see how you're handled as a, as a client, you know, and then take the good and the bad from that. And so sometimes we don't realize those who run stand up businesses and know how to communicate on the phone and, and in person, like show up, it's it for you and I, I would assume we do that. And it's, it's unfathomable that someone would set an appointment and not show up but it's insane to me how many people do that, you know, set an appointment and can't show up. So in addition to your eight revenue streams, you're adding a ninth one, Jimbo Balaam secret shopper service. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I actually looked into doing that one time, but those were my <laughs> early, my early detailing days. And it was a cold rainy winter and I looked into secret shopping <laughs> And the you know what? Wasn't ringing, but you were still hustling, right? It, the phone, and you know why I didn't do it? This should give some encouragement to some people. I didn't do it because there was a thirty dollar a month fee to like get on their list of to be a secret shopper, and then you had to use your own money to buy stuff. And I didn't have enough money to do that. So there's an encouragement <laughs> to someone that you can do it too. <laughs> Not secret shopping, but you can you know keep hustling. That's humbling when you don't have enough money to put together to start the hustle, huh? I couldn't front the money to, to buy groceries or buy a latte or buy whatever I needed to do and then wait, you know, the 30 days to be reimbursed for it. You know, I couldn't, it's not that I couldn't afford a $5 latte. It's, you know, you go buy a $5 latte and they pay you 50 cents for your review, you know? So how many times you got to do that a day? You know what I mean? But still, I had no yeah. money. I'm going to stop sugarcoating it. I had nothing. But I still suspect it's because you got busy with that uh, hand modeling career of yours. But it's, a, it's actually toe modeling. But yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> Model right. toe, toe rings in the Caribbean. 
or Caribbean? All right, what are we on? Uh, number seven. Uh, quote, can you fit me in today? End quote. And I've yeah. found you know, this call usually comes in between about 3 and 6 p.m. on a Friday or Saturday. <laughs> it's usually a younger guy who just got paid and wants to get his ride all shined up so he can take it out that night and impress the ladies. And when I explain them, I'm usually booked a few days out, they quickly hang up. You know, no parting words, just a dial tone, which honestly <laughs> is fine by me. <laughs> A lot of truth to that. I, I yeah, I do not like same day appointments. Even when I had no appointments scheduled that day, I always generally ninety nine percent of the time didn't take a same day appointment. It's usually not a good sign. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, number eight. Quote just end quote or quote, only, end mm. quote, or th- some variation of a limiting word like these, because in my not so humble opinion, it's usually a sign that they're trying to control not only the cost, but also the scope of the work. What say you? Couldn't agree more. You know, I just need the interior done. I just need the outside done. Um, I just need with this one mat done, or I just need this one seat done, Right. It's not that yep. bad. It and just he, needs a little cleaning. And even if they're, you know, good people, right, and they're a potential customer, and let's say they drove through tar or something like that, and they just have a small problem, I would just like to serve them. But I also know that by saying yes to them, I'm saying no to somebody else who could schedule during that time. Mm-hmm. And therefore, I'm going to make two or three times as much because I'm mobile. So, you know, right. there's time spent on the road. Yep. Yep. And that's sorry. Was that? No, I, it's okay. I was going to say that's where you can one uh, one way to kind of get out of that situation is to ask them for pictures. So I just need the inside down. Okay, great. Can you send me some pictures? And usually that like additional step is enough to get them to go away. <laughs> Maybe not. Yeah, I remember but, you saying yeah. that. And I, I've used that on a, a few occasions. And, and in the off chance they do send pictures, I know they're super serious about getting it done. Exactly. Because they took a few moments to walk outside. And she, or like, you know, there was a lady on the phone who didn't have an annoying tone of voice, seemed like a, a super sweet lady, described the problem to me, but I was, was kind of sketchy about, you know, is that in my wheelhouse? So I had her shoot the picture of what the concern was. Um, and I, I had a 15-minute phone call with her. And ended up telling her, look, I, I think this is a body shop situation. As much as I would like to service you, mm. uh, you only live 20 minutes from me. But for me to drive out there and look at it in person, since you sent me this picture, why don't we save all that and call around and, and you get a couple prices from a body shop instead of a detailer? Because I think it's it's a damage thing, not a dirt thing. Yep. Good idea. All right, number nine, quote, you guys, end quote, or, quote, your shop, end quote. Uh, so for me, I detail part-time in addition to my full-time job, so it's just me. Uh, my ugly mug is on the main page of the website. There's no other employees, no shop. It's just me and my truck. So I operate out of the cab and bed of a Toyota Tacoma. Uh, and when someone says one of these two phrases, I know that they haven't bothered to look at my website. They probably don't care enough to do their due diligence. They just want somebody to clean up their car, which isn't always a bad thing, but these calls can kind of go either way. Ultimately, it's an indication that even though I busted my rear end to put together an informative and engaging website that answers most questions in text and video and pictures, the caller hasn't engaged past asking Siri to find a detailer near me or whatever search terms they told her. And while I'm thankful that I'm the first listing or one of the first listings on Google, it also means that I'll be taking calls from numerous uninformed potential customers, which is basically just an indication to me that I need to do a better job of kind of pumping the brakes and not assuming that they're mm-hmm. thinking certain things um, and spend a little bit more time on the phone with them. Yep. Couldn't agree more. All right. Number 10, quote, wash and wax end quote, or, quote, wash, wax, and back, end quote. 
So I found that this type of caller typically wants to pay for as few services as possible, thinking that a wash and a wax is going to salvage years of neglect. Mm. So I usually hit them with wash, clay, polish, apply sealant, and wax so that they understand that I've got a certain method that I've refined to the point that it delivers the most value to the most customers based on the most vehicles that I usually see. And I'm not willing to half-ass it as I know it's going to end up reflecting poorly on my reputation. Plus, once I get uh, once I question this type of caller, they'll invariably ask if it would be all right if I also do a quick vacuum or wipe down the dash and clean the glass. Mm-hmm. It'd be like me walking into a hamburger place and saying, here's money for a hamburger. And then once they slap the meat down on the grill saying, hey, you wouldn't mind putting cheese on that, would you? And mm-hmm. you know, while you're at it, throw some bacon on. Um, and hey, if you wouldn't mind, just put a second beef, uh, beef patty on top. I mean, I, I wouldn't do that as much as I like hamburgers. Right. If I want a bacon cheeseburger, I'm going to order a bacon cheeseburger. So when someone calls for a wash and a whack, I'm really hesitant. And it might be that they're just old school, right? So someone, hardly anybody around here calls and says, cut and wash. But if they say something like that, I know that they're probably in their 60s, 70s, they're probably working for the team. They probably have a certain way. Of- we lost you a little bit. Am I back? Yep. Good? There you go. Yep. Okay, so um, long story short, you know, wash and wax or wash, wax, and back is an opportunity for me to say, um, here's how I usually handle it. Is this what you're looking for? Uh, so that I can just clarify with them that if there's a certain way I'm going to do it, all they want is just a wash and wax. Maybe they want to get on Craigslist and find something. Lost you again. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I, it's funny. So when I first started, um, my, uh, my like tagline was wash wax detail, right? And my, my yeah. thought was like, these are what the services encompass my business. I could wash it, I could wax it, or I could detail it, you know? And what I found was people thought that was one service. So I used to get calls and they would say, can I get a wash wax in detail? <laughs> and I, it took me a while to be like, crap, that's not, you know, that's all my services, not just one, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So I know that. Can I get a, I, did, I never really got, can I get like a cut and buff a couple times, but it usually, when I asked what kind of car they had, it usually was an older car, you know, older classic. So, yeah. but yeah, that's, I, I had to get rid of that slogan, you know? So, uh, you know, what say you, JB? What what things are coming up in your mind as far besides the tone of voice thing, which I that seems kind of like a, a trait you either have it or you don't. Maybe that's something <laughs> eventually I'll develop. Um, but you know, beyond that, what else is coming to mind right now for you? Uh, it, it's a lot of the thing you nailed almost all of them. You know, say, can I get it done same day? Um, you know, one thing that it, it's weird that I don't like it, but I have a really low closing rate of getting the job is when someone, and it's weird cause I actually prefer it, but it just, in reality, it doesn't work is when someone doesn't call me, they just text me. And so like they'll text and say, Hey, hey I have this car. I'd need to get a quote for a, mm-hmm. you know, detail. And it, I never very, very rarely do I end up getting those jobs, you know? So it's, it's still, even though I would prefer to people only text me all day long, um, if they only text without a call, my rate on landing the job is very low. So are you saying you would prefer to try to close via text only or? Yes. Yep. I would prefer no one call and they only text, you know, but because, and once I, once I've established a relationship with the customer and done their car at least once, uh, all my clients I text. Like my clients don't call me anymore. We just text back and forth, right? But yeah. I'm, I'm speaking for a brand new customer, never had my services done before, and the, their first interaction with me is texting. Um, yeah, I never land that client for whatever reason. Well, I guess that's the uh, virtual version of a queer tone of voice or something. 
and it's bad because it's almost to the point where it's like well, it's not even worth texting back, you know. But I tried to. Yeah, I then tried you to run the risk of them putting a, a one star on Google. Um, That's what I worry so about. There've been, yeah, there have been one or two customers who I, I didn't think much was going to happen recently, but I texted them back anyway just because I'm, I'm kind of playing defense with that, right? Because I don't want them to, to put a, a one star rating and, and write something like, totally. this guy's a a D bag and he doesn't call you back. I mean, that that's not my thing. I don't, I don't want to be that guy. So even though I know it's probably not going to go anywhere, um, yep. sometimes it's uh, <laughs> urinating in the wind, but you know what you're doing. <laughs> and that's, How's that for a visual? that's pretty, <laughs> yeah. Pretty, never heard that one before. Great visual. Um, <laughs> yeah, but that's, and you're welcome. <laughs> I'm trying to think of any other – I think you really nailed it. You know, It's not that bad. Um, I, I guess another one would be – so for me, detailing is my full-time gig. And so it's – I work Monday through Friday, some Saturdays, and I don't work on Sunday. So kind of a red flag starts popping up for me when like someone needs it done only on the weekend. You know, that's – I usually don't land those very often either, or or they end up being a little bit more difficult. You know, that yep. would be another one. Um, obviously, so they when, ask you to show up wearing wearing only a speedo. That's yeah, disqualifier. Yeah, at six p.m. It's weird. I don't know. Um, <laughs> right now, a big red flag. Well, maybe not. I I haven't had anyone ask or care, but if they wanted to do like some weird no touch situation but i'd probably i i pretty much yeah i don't take on too many new clients nowadays so um i'm really 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 picky on on all that on my phone calls um i think that's it i mean you nailed definitely the top 10 by far for sure well then Let's close on a positive. I'll, I'll describe my unicorn. I only have one customer that's like this. I okay. wish I could clone him and make more. And sure. while I'm doing that, I want you to think about your best customers and their traits. But uh, he's a guy. He's very grateful. He's affluent. He stays in his house while I'm working. He leaves the keys and the money in the cup holder. He turns the alarm off to the garage. He has the garage doors open. He doesn't have any guard dogs. Uh, he refers me to his affluent friends. He has really nice vehicles. He allows me to come at odd hours, and he texts me a few days prior to actually needing the service. Uh, he has stronger than normal water pressure at the hose bib, um, <laughs> and he has plenty of shaded areas to work. Uh, and he doesn't wait until his cars are trashed to call for service. So, uh, you know, the only way he could be a better customer it would involve him grilling steaks every time I detail <laughs> and then offering to them to me and or having the Swedish bikini team on hand to assist with the wash process. So I O there you, you go. Know, there, yeah. There's, there's plenty of customers who I have who are awesome. And if any of them are listening, thank you for your business. I appreciate it. Uh, but there's only a couple customers that I would say are kind of, you know, pinnacle and nail in so many categories, but yep. describe to me what makes somebody a really good customer for you or, or makes you want to bust your rear end or over deliver, or you definitely want to keep them, uh, close to your chest, if you will. Yep. So I have I have two right now that are just all star clients. One, uh, it's actually a weekly client. Uh, they pay extremely well. They tip every week. They stay in their house. They're always home when I when I'm there and need the keys. Uh, and they give nice bonuses around the holidays. Uh, there, there's not a ton of shade and. There's kind of a lot of work, but they pay extremely well so I could hit my hourly rate that I want, and it's consistent, and they never, ever, 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 ever complain, ever. And the very few times that there has been an issue, they're like super grateful, super forgiving. Uh, even They even say stuff like, oh, you know, this isn't this isn't the normal Jimbo, so I wonder what happened, you know? Um, so one's like that. The other one... Um, same deal. They text me, uh, you know, a week out at least and ask me when, you know, when I have time to come do it. When I get there, they're usually not there. 
but they open their garage door remotely. The key and the payment is already waiting inside the car or they'll pay me via like Apple pay or something like that. Um, and I just, they have a nice area for me to do their car. I just pull it out of the garage, pull it right back in the garage when I'm done. And, uh, you know, but yeah, same with you. Basically they don't bother me. They're super nice and friendly and easy to deal with. They're not, um, you know, definitely willing to go over and beyond for them, but they don't, uh, they, they're not high maintenance clients. You know what I mean? And, and it's weird for them not being high maintenance clients. I treat them like a high maintenance client, you know, and go over and beyond for them. And those are the clients that get, you know, I'll use a spray, a really good spray sealant or spray coating instead of a quick detail spray every time and not, I don't tell them about it really. I don't charge them for it, but their car looks bitching every time I do it. And again, they don't wait till they, you know, have driven through a snowstorm for six months and then call me, you know, <laughs> Yep. Not that we have snowstorms in Seal Beach, but we can get to snow pretty easily. Well, I don't know. You keep going up the hill. It gets colder and colder. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. You know, <laughs> the top of the hill may be even lower sea level than the bottom of the hill. That's how small of a hill it is. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm on the wrong side of the hill. Who knows? Hey, I got some outro music, but I'm not sure if it's going to violate YouTube copyright. We'll figure so, it out. I don't know if you want to do an outro. Do it. Let's do it. All right, here it comes. <laughs> and that's going to, you know, all those people who call <laughs> with just the goofiness that you have to deal with with having a business, but you know, thank God the phones ran. Uh, I'm grateful, so I don't want to come across as as a complete jerkwad. I'm I'm thankful that you the phones ring. I'm thankful that it's, it's a good problem to have to have to kind of sift through some of the BS phone calls. But it also is instructive. And it's little stuff like the the keywords on AdWords. There's things that I can do, or I should do, or I must do to make sure that I'm I'm kind of playing defense with that. So with that, I'll throw it back to you. No, I think that's part of owning a business, right? And growing a business and being a good business owner is you don't have time to take everyone's, you know, take care of everyone's car, you know? So you have to pick and choose and you're elevating your business and your life and, and all that. And so I, th I don't think you definitely didn't come off as a jerk and I hope we didn't together. Um, that song is very risky. If you would have let it play beyond the chorus, I know that song well, and that is a very risky song. <laughs> DMX is a very uh, explicit rapper. <laughs> <laughs> X going to give it to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Never felt more white in my life. <laughs> you and me both, man. I'm a 45-year-old white guy, but I, I remember back in the day when, Dude, when that was new. <laughs> I, love, I love rap, and I used to get teased in school, rap is crap, but I, DMX was on my list, man. He is hardcore. Uh, Joe, if people want to connect with you or pick your brain or waste some of your time or shoot, if they're in your area, how can they get their car detailed by you or reach out to you? Sure. I am absolutely nowhere on any social media ever. And hopefully I'll keep it that way. So <laughs> you got to go old school. The website is make my auto shine. So for all those people who are like me, that's HTTP colon back, back www.makemyautoshine.com. Uh, you can connect with me through there. There's a, a form you can fill out. My cell phone number is listed on there. Feel free to blow that up. I actually had uh, two detailers from the area reach out to me, which was nice because I had a chance to talk to colleagues based on past episodes. So you know, if I could be helpful, awesome. even if you're not in the area, it doesn't matter. If I could be helpful, glad to be helpful. Um, and certainly if you've got a nice vehicle and you don't need it done today, and it's not just, and you're not sure how much it costs and everything else we covered this episode, please do. And if you, you know, I, oh, we lost you a little bit, but I'll jump in real quick. I wouldn't say copy his website, but if you're looking for a uh, kind of a template or something to look at, uh, definitely make my auto shine dot com. It when you say you are clear with your verbiage uh, and your pricing, it's it's very clear there. So great job with that. And again, I appreciate you taking the time to come on and talk to someone like me. 
Yeah, thanks for having me back on, JB, and congratulations on uh, completing the move without losing your sanity. <laughs> That's still TBD. TBD. <laughs> 